Jason and Tony Butts of Forge a Legacy. Creating a marriage that has romance engaged takes effort. So how do we create romance? How do we get to the point of being able to work on this critical piece when life is so incredibly full? What do we do to escape a frenzied life so we can bask in the single most important human relationship that God has given us? Today we'll talk about how to step away from that frenzied life in a way. It's important to remember you have time for what you prioritize. Again, you have time for what you prioritize. Creating rhythm and margin in our lives are very important. They're paramount. Why do we need to do this? Because we need to establish healthy boundaries in all areas of our lives. There are two areas that we're going to address today. First, managing children, and second, stoking the flame of romance in marriage. We'll begin with managing children. Establishing boundaries is necessary. God created our families to follow in the function, to function in the following order. First God, then marriage, and then the children. And families that have this order out of order usually find themselves functioning in dysfunction and in dismal situations. We have to remember that children don't rule the roost, right? They don't rule the roost. You do. Your children will be okay if they don't get your attention all of the time. In fact, it's better and perfectly normal for them to be able to understand that mom and dad do need time with each other and that that is very important. And more, it's quite okay to expect children to spend time alone on their own or in their rooms even working on projects or reading and having quiet time and being respectful age appropriately, of course. Tell about four months of age, babies need to be able to be handled, held, yes. cared for at their whim all the time. That builds security in them. At that time, usually between 11 and 13 pounds, babies can start to be trained. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of sleep training before. It's an amazing, Thing. It's worth reading about if you haven't already. Really, the premise of sleep training is for a child to learn at an early age how to self-soothe, to comfort. And it builds in them an independence, and not in an unhealthy way, but in a way that they then can have rhythm to their lives. It builds security when they know what, even at an early age, what's expected of them and, and what you you know what you'll do to walk beside them yes. obviously they need more in those early years than as they get older but it really brings about peace in a home when sleep training is established it's hard for a first the first day or two it's really hard yeah. i won't lie but it is absolutely worth it in the long run in fact it's so important that our children, as they are now in their upper teen years, still have incredible rhythm to their life. Yes. And I truly believe it has something to do with the fact that God led us to sleep train because a doctor said something to me, handed me a book, and just said, look at this. And, and you know, Bo was, our oldest, was just an infant <laughs> and it made all the difference in the world and it and like I said it still does today the that concept of our our kids being able to focus on what's important and then walk independently where they can has certainly been something through sleep training so again if you have not studied it look it up it is absolutely, absolutely worth it but going back to managing children when when you're thinking of making sure you have time for your spouse, it's imperative to have, one way to do this is it's imperative to have a variety of movies, videos on hand that would be beneficial to your children. Not any movie is, but uh, back in our day, it was DVDs. Now I know there's a lot on demand that you can get, but 
having those opportunities for your children so that you can slip away together makes it so that there's no guilt because they're learning something and they're, you know, it's something of value at the same time. Yes. So let's describe bedtime and how how that functioned. Sure, sure. So when our kids were small, this is beyond the the baby phase where they slept because the the studies show they can sleep 12 hours at night uninterrupted and you train them to do that and and it's based around you know eating schedules and everything. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh but as they they grow, they they continue those sleep schedules obviously not necessarily needing 12 hours at night but then they aren't taking naps during the day so it is still a length of time at night and so with that your children go to bed much earlier than you in general and and they may just have some quiet time it may yes. not be a time where they go to bed and go to sleep right away right our boys absolutely loved adventures and odyssey when they were little they read books. The Action Bible was a huge one. Oh, our our kids still talk about the pictures. They can remember the Bible stories from the Old Testament based on the the pictures from the Action Bible it ingrained in their minds. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty neat. You know, even playing with toys quietly or building crafts in their room, depending on what you allow at that Absolutely. time. But yeah. it is a good wind down and then they learn how to soothe themselves getting ready for bed all of those things are important and as they grow it doesn't mean they have to still listen to adventures and odyssey although i wouldn't mind i think it's pretty good but our boys would listen to the radio and and that had a lineup where even chuck swindoll was on the radio and if i could i'll just say that you know that was that was great there are things that you know, you think, oh, it's above them, but maybe we'll cover that in another video. Yes. There is there's something to be said about kids having that opportunity to just grow a, ahead, move ahead. And mm -hmm. then you are at the same time allowing them to learn and you have no guilt. You can stoke and manage that flame in your marriage at the same time with the right materials. Yes, that's how we began hanging out. That became our sure. term in the household where the boys would go to their rooms and do what they were doing, creating a healthy rhythm and margin for themselves. Mm -hmm. And we were helping manage that. But then we were able to manage and create space for us to have romance, to engage in a variety of ways, which we're going to unpack in this video today. In fact, our kids will still, like I mentioned a little bit ago, have that rhythm. But if we don't have that rhythm and, and they notice we're not hanging out because maybe we're too busy with ministry, we used to be incredibly good about s sectioning off time. Yes. But as we were launching into ministry and learning a new normal for us, our then 16-year-old said, Mom and Dad, aren't you going to hang out? He was concerned. There is a healthy concern about learning rhythms in life and walking those out. So he kind of challenged us in yeah. a very healthy way. Yeah, but that happened because he was used to us hanging out. Children really should have a mentality that their mom and dad hang out on a regular basis to the point where a child could say, wow, that's crazy. They're actually hanging out again. But you know what that does? That creates stability within them. It creates stability within the household because they see a marriage that is functioning together and prioritizing what matters most. And then those seeds are going to be planted in their hearts and then harvested someday when they get married and they determine, yes, I saw this in my parents. I will do it in my marriage as well. I will spend time with my wife and do what's necessary to make that happen. Yes. So when it comes to stoking the flame of marriage, we believe there are non-negotiable date nights. Mm -hmm. So what did that look like for us to have non-negotiable date nights? Well, that meant that there were a few days a week that we sectioned off and said, we're not working. We are not going to do certain activities. After the children go to bed, yes. we still worked. <laughs> right, right. We're talking date nights. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, yeah, we did that. And for several seasons of our lives, we determined that it would be 
one day a week or two or three days a week specifically that, no, we're not going to schedule anything unless something is so urgent and comes up that you just have to handle it we would make sure we have those nights. And if something came up that was very urgent, we would shift the date night or yes. nights to other times so we wouldn't forsake it. And let's just say, you know, as we as we build in life and we're just continually working toward our next goals, it's easy to just keep working every night of the week. Absolutely. We absolutely can fall into that. So this is a choice a person makes and maybe you don't literally have to write it on the calendar, but maybe you do to say, this is what we're doing this evening. Yes. You know, maybe it's mm -hmm. an hour. It's only an hour. Maybe, you know, but let's be realistic. It may not be a four hour opportunity, but it's the, it's these little choices that add up to a sum total of greatness over the course of time. When your kids are little, if they're going to bed at six or let's just say seven o'clock, they're mm -hmm. going to their room, perhaps they're falling asleep around eight or nine o'clock. Well, you basically have two hours, somewhere around two mm -hmm. hours on average. That's typical when children are little, but you need to take that time and you need to make that sacrifice, put other, forsake other things in life so you can have this time together. Mm -hmm. It's critical to build excitement by planning ahead. Guys, this really falls on us a lot. We need to help plan ahead. One date per week is what we say. Make sure that you have at least one date per week. If you can get out of the house, great. If not, there are a lot of things that you can do inside the house as well. Make it a priority that you get away together, that you do something together. It's vital for the health of any marriage and it really impacts the family and your children's future marriages as well because then they'll see that you're prioritizing romance as something that really matters. When the kids are young, having date nights at home is something that we did 9.9 .9 times out of 10. Right. A it lot. was very rare. It's about that, all we could do. Yes. But you know, it's a choice again. What are you going to do with that time? Maybe you're going to have a special meal together after the kids go to bed. Or maybe you're going to have dessert and have a, you know, a certain conversation. Maybe uh, sometimes people like those conversation starters. There are so many out there that you can use if, if that's something for you. Devotions, uh, those kinds of things. Whatever you do, spice it up. Make it fun. Build the anticipation because that is half of the fun is building, you know, what are, what are you going to do in that time? Tuesday night, we're going to do this, you know, looking ahead. Otherwise, a person's tired, the kids go to bed, and it's natural to fall into either you're going to keep working because that's what we all know, right. <laughs> how to work, 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 or, it, you know, turn on the TV and stare at something that doesn't really matter. And so really planning ahead is wise. Yes. Let's take a look at some of the little things we can do when the children are young and we can't get out or we don't can't get we can't, out as we, easily. Can't get us out as easily. Maybe we can't have baby, babysitters as much. Let's just focus in on some of the little things we can do. Some of the connectors. So I always loved the game Boggle. And when we met and in college, we played the game Boggle for fun. Yes. We also played Chinese checkers. That was something we did for a long time. We still will play Boggle, and Jason has improved greatly over the years, and I'm getting, uh, let's see, not getting. I have gotten more competitive because I don't want him to beat me. So I'm not competitive with anything else in life. I don't even care, but I'm competitive when it comes. <laughs> but it's a fun competitive. It is, it is. It's not this over-the-top, serious kind of point of view. Another th game that we play is double solitaire. You can play solitaire by yourself, but double solitaire is with cards. Fun with cards, mm -hmm. because that game we can, there is a pace to it, there is a competitive edge to it, but also we can sit face to face and have a conversation. Now, there are people that greatly enjoy strategy games and mm -hmm. ones that you really have to think on. Unfortunately, we, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, that is not us. And you just have to find what is you and go for it. That's right. completely fine. We just know that our brains are constantly going else, 
you know, otherwise. And so we really want to be careful that when we, when we play games, we're just kind of relaxing. And so for us, that's how it works. Also couples devotionals. I sort of mentioned that before we used to do those regularly mm -hmm. because it helped us understand each other more. And we definitely advocate for that. We often now read books. And so whatever subject we both feel that we need to study, Always for us, it's always nonfiction books. It obviously wouldn't have to be some but, kind of Christian living. Something yeah, something that helps us in our faith. Usually, that's where we're at right yeah. now. But we will read it out loud together. And by I say we read it out loud together, it's I have to because otherwise I fall asleep. So, <laughs> so he's very kind to me. And he lets me read, but. I will read it out loud. We'll maybe read a chapter and at most two, but we have good conversation around that and we're learning together. And so that's a really neat opportunity to be learning the same kind of things at, at that same time. Couples questions. You brought that up before. Mm -hmm. Those could be where there are packs that you can buy and it will help you unpack things in your life. You can, it can bring up topics that you may not normally address. And so those can be good conversation yeah. starters. Those are great for the table as well. Here's a bonus for when you're eating with the family. Conversation starters like that, we've used those as well. But for couples, yeah. that can be fantastic because we can easily get in a groove as a couple and continually talk about the same thing or continually not talk about right. anything. Right, right. Worship and praying together. You know, in the digital era of having music at our fingertips, it's super easy to put on music and worship together. And it's also easy to say, no, I'm not really into it. That I don't know if that will really connect me with my spouse. It will. It really will. If Absolutely. You, when your heart is in to it and, you know, together focused with the Lord, it's a really beautiful place to be. And then praying together always mm -hmm. is, a, is a really, really, really good thing because they do say. Right, a couple that prays together stays together. And we believe that worship and prayer and reading God's word really are interwoven. They move together and they help a family, they help a couple grow synergistically. Because you want to be on the same page, same biblical worldview with everything that you do. And this is the heartbeat of a family. And often when we were younger, it was a struggle. We were tired and we had to put a CD on. We had to find what CD and then find a little radio player to put it on, a boom box, and get that going. Sometimes we'd have the lights on or the lights on dim. Sometimes we felt it needed to be more of a time that we were really just resting in the secret place with the Lord and putting that music on. And maybe we'd put on some candlelight mm -hmm. and then we'd pray and we'd have some conversations around really what was on our hearts. Yes. Learning a musical instrument together or instruments that might be fun or creating crafts together. Some people enjoy woodworking and painting together and those kinds of things. Those are options for a date night at home. Yes, there's a variety of things that you can do. Really, the options are limitless, what mm -hmm. you can do. And so you can hang out when your kids are young at home and you can do a variety of things. We've only scratched the surface of what we've even implemented in our own lives. But here's another thing that's really important. You can learn how to dance. Mm-hmm. You want to talk about that? Sure. You know, we for a while took ballroom dance lessons and that was so good for us. I think we'll uncover that yes, a little bit will. more another time. But... Then taking it, bringing it home, you know, taking it from the class to bringing it home so that you can improve throughout the week is really a neat opportunity because, you know, you may have to, not all of us have a huge space in our house, so we might need to push furniture aside a little bit. But how fun is that to spend even 15 minutes practicing and your children reap the benefits? They think it's so, when they're little, they think it's so cool to see mom and dad whisking around the, the dance floor at home. And what an opportunity to grow together and have a lot of fun in the journey. Because it's not about perfection, it's about doing it together. Who doesn't want to dance in the kitchen? What wife doesn't want to be swept off her feet in the living room and boom, put a little bit of dance music on 
and swing away. Who wouldn't want that? Mm -hmm. Boy, that is such an amazing foundation that can create in your marriage. Yes, yes. And with that about being sassy and connective, sit on the couch, cuddle, do the things that you used to love to do. Remember that? All you wanted to do was be around each other, hold each other when you first fell in love. Get back to that. You can rekindle the embers of romance. Stoke those flames. It's worth it and it's completely possible to do. And so we encourage you to do that. While we're going through this, we do want to make sure that we caution you. There are some things, some activities that you uh, people that people can do, marriages can get involved in that become very disconnected. And so focus on things that are connective. We would say severely limit time on devices, technology, TV, even going to movies or other activities that are not engaging. Be very careful of those things because you need more face-to-face -face with your spouse. She really needs it, but it is good for both of you versus shoulder-to-shoulder. -shoulder. This isn't, we don't communicate that well together as humans this way. It's far better this way, especially man and wife. Yes. And then let's transition to when the kids are older, what kinds of things can be done. It's often that a child or children do not need babysitters when they get older, or maybe the older ones can take care of the younger ones, and then you can get out of the house a little bit easier. So breakfast, lunch, or supper dates are really exciting. Yes. Coffee dates are wonderful. You love those, don't you? I love those. <laughs> oh, I do. What about watching the sunrise or the sunset mm, together? Yes. Cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, mm. walking, hiking, kayaking, even going on a drive. As you get older, that's actually a little fun. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought it was crazy that my grandparents used to go on drives. I don't think it's crazy anymore. No, we don't. <laughs> we think it's great. Are there beautiful places to visit in your town or your county, maybe even your region, that you places that are just perfect for a date time, maybe places you've never explored and you always thought it would be great, or maybe there is something you've always wanted to learn and you haven't. Do it together. Mm. What an opportunity. And then schedule bigger dates. Yes. All the anticipation of planning for a long weekend away, which by the way, we advocate for at least one long weekend away a year. Now, Obviously, it would be wonderful if it could be more than that. But but plan that time. Do what you must to prioritize that mm. because that special time away creates such security and a firm foundation and so much joy that, that causes you be able, to be able to move ahead. Mm. And guys, don't forget to prioritize putting effort into planning special events such as Valentine's, there's a big one, anniversaries, that's huge, birthdays, and more. It's critical that you make sure that your wife knows she's special and you want to do something special on those days. For planning for anything, I'll just say it's important to remember <laughs> what we prioritize is our choice. And so we know 365 days in advance yeah. when an anniversary is coming or a birthday, or a whatever, right? So all the more, I mean, it doesn't take a ton of spontaneity. It takes a ton of, honestly, think, looking, watching, paying attention to what matters to the other person, putting that together. I lay these things before the Lord, and I watch him put these puzzle pieces together, and then it's a joy. And the romance is really sparked from the joy of anticipating, planning, and thinking about what the other would greatly enjoy. This doesn't come naturally to me. So I do, I do need the Lord's help in this. And for me, I set time aside before it becomes too late. I don't want to procrastinate in any situation. I know that time will slip away. So I decide weeks, if not months in advance, that I'm going to start purchasing cards, or I'm going to start working on projects, or I'm going to start talking with the Lord about some possible plans. I'm going to write some notes down. All it takes sometimes is five minutes, 
15 minutes to sit down and say, this is what I'm going to focus on right now. I'm going to brainstorm. I might not even come up with what we end up doing in the long run, but I'm going to come up with ideas. Those ideas I could come back for for other events or special times as well. But it just takes a little bit of effort. If we can put some effort into other areas of our lives, we can take a few moments to put some effort into this that will reap great rewards on the other side. Mm -hmm. We also encourage people to create their perfect date. Work on it. So here's the great thing about creating your perfect date. You can go out and you can try all sorts of different things and maybe you determine that wasn't the perfect date or maybe elements of it were and ele elements of it were not. However, here's the great thing. The key is you spend time together and you're building an adventure together. What is better than to go on a journey to experience a date time with each other and, and find out what matters most to each other and how you connect the most? Nobody can take that away from you. You had time together. So build that, even if it takes 10 years to figure out what the perfect date is, or maybe there isn't a perfect date, but you're having fun on the journey. Absolutely. As we mentioned earlier, the little things still matter, even when the kids are older. So those great activities of playing games, doing devotions, reading books together are always great fallback options, even when, yes, you could get a babysitter, mm -hmm. but let's, or you have a built-in babysitter at home or you don't need a babysitter. Yes. Never forsake even those fallback options. It's so good to spend time together even at home. Yes, and again, to reiterate it, praying, worshiping, and reading God's word together should not be a fallback. It should be something that is a constant mm -hmm. in your marriage. So we encourage that to always be a part of it. Again, we want to bring another caution in at this point in time and challenge you to make sure that you don't have dates that lack connectivity. Oftentimes, Tony and I will be out on a date and we will look around and we will see that we are the only ones holding hands, looking at each other and having a conversation. Many times we see other couples disengaged looking at their cell phone. How much of your life is determined by looking at a little screen. Should it be? We believe it should not be. So it's critical that you focus on each other. Guys, how much, how important is your bride? Isn't your bride more important than this? More important than a sports score or how well your team did? The new hunting tips that came out or new videos that were posted, really? Those things don't matter in the long run. They don't matter to her, they don't matter to God, they shouldn't matter to you more than her, and they don't matter to your family. With that, bring chivalry back to life. Bring it back, guys. Spend time with your wife. Spend time with her like she's the only thing that matters, and nothing matters more than her. Be a gentleman. Be her knight in shining armor. No matter how long a girl has been your girl, it knocks her socks off when you're chivalrous, when you're gentleman-like and thoughtful. Yes. Keep that in mind, guys. So purposeful planning is critical to establishing and fostering romance within marriage. Make romance the heartbeat of your marriage. Boundaries and weekly rhythms must be created. Guys, we have to remember flexibility is key as life can throw us curveballs. But remaining focused on building a deeper relationship with our spouse is paramount. Most couples don't have the goal of falling out of love when they become empty nesters. So it takes effort to continually fall in love with your spouse as you're going through the child rearing years. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for the connections that you allow. Lord, let us not forget what your priorities are. Your first institution was marriage. It was family. And so, Lord, let us remember these things and live them out. Bubble up in us the desire to honor our spouses, because when we do, we honor you. 
Lord, we love you and we thank you for the amazing opportunity you give us to show your love to our spouses. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today and you believe it would help others, we ask that you would like this video. Subscribe so that you can be notified when other videos come out and share this video. Visit the other resources that we have provided in our description below as well. Remember that you're not alone. No matter what you've been through, what you're going through, what you've faced, you're not alone. Do whatever it takes to get healthy so you can be all that you were destined to be. Do whatever it takes because forging a legacy matters for eternity.